implemented by DHEC since uh, 03, and uh, they come once a month to get milk samples, test the milk for coli, uh, somatic cell count, temperature, and different things. And uh, they watch me like I'm under a microscope because they want to be sure everything's right, which is good. And so they just, uh, it's just an everyday thing. The cows don't take a holiday, you know. <laughs> they just keep right there every day, twice a day, got to milk them. The cows uh, have to ruminate, which means they chew a cud, fill up on hay or grass and feed, and then they'll lay down and burp it up and chew it some more, and then they go in another stomach. They got three or four stomachs, I think, in a wow. cow. Wow. So that's how they, they ruminate. That's what we call it. And they, the milking process is lactate, they're lactate, which is giving them milk. And they don't do that till they have a baby calf. I mean, they have to be about, they're usually about two years old, maybe a little more, when they have their first calf. And uh, the gestation is nine months cycle, just like a human. And uh, we breed them artificially. We don't, uh, we don't have a bull because bulls get mean, real mean. And so I don't want to take a chance with a bull. And so we breed them, we choose whichever bull we want to use from an organization called Select Sires. And it comes out of Tennessee. And uh, they have to pay somebody to do the breeding too. Somebody knows how to do that. I don't do it myself. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's kind of a science too. It's more than just milking cows. We feed them hay during the winter because the grass is down then. They, they can't get it, but during the growing season, when grass is growing in the spring, like it's starting to get green out there now. They're trying to eat it the best they can, but I still have to give them hay because they have to have that hay to, to ruminate, that roughage. They gotta have roughage to ruminate, fiber. They gotta have that fiber, which is in hay or grass. And, of course, they give them the grain too when I milk them which is a mixture of uh, oats and corn and wheat and soybeans, and maybe cottonseed meal, all that and minerals. It's a 21% protein and it's locally grown. It's not from a big processing plant like pellet form, but it's locally grown feed, which is better. I kind of got interested in farm work uh, back when I was in high school. And I left the fool with cows. They, they're just slow and laid back, kind of like me. And so you know, they don't get in a hurry unless you get scared or something. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I just uh, enjoy doing it, kind of like a hobby. And for a while I was doing it, uh, had a co had a co-op, which means a group of families would be to get together and they'd sign up to be in the co-op and they were getting the milk from me. Uh, it's like they bought shares in the cow and like they're getting their own milk. And DHEC didn't, uh, didn't say much about that because you can't stop somebody from drinking their own milk from their own cows. <laughs> but it was just th theoretically, it wasn't actually a change of money. It was until you had to be a member of the co-op to get the milk. Mm -hmm. But after that, DHEC decided I needed to, if I'm gonna keep doing it, I need to get a cement floor and hot and cold water and milking machines and all the nine yards to make a cooler, milk cooler, so so they could permit me. And that was back in 03. I got permitted in 03. So I've been doing it for about 16 years uh, with DHEC uh, monitoring me all along, you know. Mm. So. They want to feed and they want to be milked. I'm hoping that rain will let up a little. I gotta get a bag of feed out of that truck. Yeah, that's a lot of feed. I, actually, I've unloaded it, put it in here. Mm -hmm. My storage for the feed. At least it's not that cold. I get my feed ready first. Either two gallon buckets and I fill them almost full. That 
that much feed for, for milking. How many cows do you have? Milking eight right now. This is not clay, mozzarella clay it's called. This is a detoxer, it's also a dewormer. It mm -hmm. deworms the cows. I just sprinkle it on top of the feed right here. To detox the cows and the diatomaceous earth is a natural dewormer. The dewormer. Nice. Yeah. I also give them something called uh, apple cider vinegar. I put it in the drinking water. It helps them. I have oh, I think yeah. it helps them to ruminate. And uh, sometimes people will tell me they've had milk from other places, raw milk, but they say yours just tastes better. And so I think this might have something to do with that. Put a little vinegar in the water every day, apple cider vinegar. Feed me. <laughs> they know they like to socialize too, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's called a milking parlor, and that over there is a milk room. We've got two cows at a time. There's one here, one down there. In the milking process, I have to wash, rinse, and sanitize every time. Wash, rinse, and sanitize. Now I'm getting ready to sanitize. Okay, this is expensive piece of equipment, just like most everything else is in here. This tank is a new one, probably cost four or five thousand dollars. A new tank like this, same as this. Okay, sanitize the spring. It, but then I rinse it off because I don't want it in the milk. Okay, this, this is a strainer set on top of the milk tank. Okay. Milk filter it filters the milk. And this is a little dome that will clock down on it to hold it in tight. Hold it in tight. Put this in here like this. Milk system with hot water to get all that sanitizer out of there. Rinse it with hot water so there'd be no sanitizer in the, in the milk system. Do that sanitize all this and rinse it out good before it starts milking. Turn this off. The first one is the boss. The first one is the boss? Yeah. She's the boss of the, of the other cows. Why? Wow. It's just like people. There's always somebody the boss, you know. Yeah. All right, this is fancy. You know how she's going to turn around? She knows what I'm doing. All right, no more. They don't give as much right now. One thing, this is pregnant, and I'm trying to get that in the <laughs> Okay, I'm first washing with the iodine wash. I'm washing the udders of the teats with the uh, iodine sanitizer, I mean iodine wash, I'm sorry. Then I sanitize also the teats. If they come in here and they've got junk on the key, sometimes I'll have to use a hose to wash them off with some warm water. That's got being clean right there. And everywhere else. I don't think I've ever had anybody come here and want to take this much interest in it as you have. 
I'm sure there's people who are interested in it. Yeah, but not to take video cameras and <laughs> all that. I done wash first and then sanitizer wash next. See, the cows know what I'm doing and they, they don't kick me and fight me, they they know. Take, take the towel, dry it off. Dry that off. That one wants some more. Yes. <laughs> you get in the way. It won't be there. Eat it off the floor until you get it. Yeah. Now let's melt it. Okay, right there. It won't get as much. Finally, this is this is my older one. He's an older cow. He's got the old one out here. So when I pull down on it, I get a little bit more. I think it's good to milk them out good and not leave it in there. the vacuum it just comes right off. Well, they give the most milk when they have a calf. When they have a calf, they can give five to six gallons a day. One's pregnant and the other one's got age on them. They don't give it much. Okay, now I'm going to pump it out of here and put it in the tank. See the milk going in. Oh, yes. See that? Flat liquid gold. Stir that warm milk up a little bit. Can we look inside again? That's right. Stir all that warm milk up with the cool milk and make the temperature go up a little. Cool. Right, I'm going to switch it over on the cool. The warm milk stirred up and made the temperature go up a little. Now it's cooling it back down. This tells me how cool the milk is right here. It'll, it'll get it down to 32 degrees, then it's cut off. And when I start milking, it'll be putting warm milk in there, and it'll come back on again. Like it's just a big refrigerator, is what it is. I live in Taylor, South Carolina. 29687 is the zip. And uh, the cows. Have, we have milk from the cow every day, uh, seven days a week. The cow has to be milk every day. They don't take a holiday. <laughs> what days are best to come? Uh, if you came like on Wednesdays or Saturdays, I have to empty my buck tank then, and I'll have more milk because those days I have to empty the tank to wash it. Saturdays and Wednesdays. I want it to stir while I'm doing this so it stirs the cream up too. That's good. Doesn't take long to fill one. <laughs> okay, we have about uh, 26, 27 acres here for, for this little dairy. And uh, a cow needs to have about an acre per cow for a pasture. About an acre per cow. If it's a good pasture. If it's not too good, then you might need two acres 
quick out because they need that good grass, especially when they're in the growing season. So, to have, to have a dairy, you have to have some land, first and foremost. Raw milk is uh, more nutritional than processed milk because the processed milk is pasteurized and homogenized, it changes, changes the, the chemical composition of the milk. Uh, when you pasteurize milk, you cook it, and it kills, if any bad things in it, bad bacteria, it kills that, but it also kills the blood. It kills everything. And so, when they homogenize the milk, that breaks the cream particles down real small, so that uh, the cream won't rise to the top. And uh, when you drink it, drink homogenized milk, the, the cream particles are so small that they absorb into your bloodstream. It makes your cholesterol go up. But the raw milk won't do that because the cream particles are large. And they pass on through your digestive system without being absorbed in the bloodstream. It's better. No nutritionally better. And uh, a little story is about a lady that used to get milk from me. She may still do it, but I, I hadn't seen her in a while. And she's diabetic. And she says, when she drinks the milk out of the store, she has to take insulin. When she drinks the milk, the raw milk, straight from the cows, she doesn't have to take the insulin because the natural sugars in that milk stabilize her sugar level. And so the milk is like a medicine to her. She doesn't have to take it. It stabilizes her sugar level, so she doesn't have to take insulin like she would if she drank processed milk. Now, some people are afraid of raw milk, but they think if it's not pasteurized, it might not might make you sick. But it's just it's not true. Raw milk is, is better for you nutritionally. Uh, those people have told me that they were lactose intolerant to the processed milk. They couldn't hardly handle it. But when they drank the raw milk, no problem. It went through the digestive system just fine. And uh, one person told me he'd about to give up on drinking milk because he just couldn't, couldn't handle it. But he started drinking this kind of milk and no problem. Today's March 1st, so I'm going to put 3-1. That's today's date. March nice. 1st. So then they, they know when it, I don't predate it. You get it in the stores, it's predated. You know, like it might be five days old when you get it. And they say, oh, it'll be fresh till maybe a week from now. I date it when I bought it. It's $5 a gallon all the time. Other people sell it for six and seven, but I sell it for five. Now I put something on their teeth. It's like a buttercream. It keeps their teeth from getting sore. Get this covered. Angle. You want to smell it? What is it? Smell it. it smells good. Yeah, it is. What's good. it called again? It's utterly smooth. Nice. It, it was originally made for cows, but they sell it for people now as a, as a body cream. <laughs> yeah, put that on. Because I don't want these tits to get sore. If they get sore, you're in trouble. A little bit. You listen how I had milk them before I ever had the milking machine. I always check them. Fresh okay. milk, warm. You want to taste it? I could. <laughs> Mmm. Tastes really, really good, surprisingly. Yeah, that's Fresh. That's how you taste. Go fancy. Cool and happy. So we got a one of these. Wow. Yeah. This is Cal, uh, Katrina. This is Katrina. He is hungry. Pretty good. Yeah. Somebody they're not circus animals, but they do pretty good. Yeah. 
That's the only time it does that. She makes a noise when you Wow. She got started in doing it. She don't make more quick. Wow. She to make that noise when she eats. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. When I, when I wash them off like that, they let their milk down. They didn't let it down, you didn't get it. You, you can feel the udder kind of firm up a little when they let the milk down. You want to let the camera down and um, put the milk on one time? <laughs> oh, me? Yeah. We can, yeah. Okay, put that one. And I'll feed It's not like a vacuum cleaner. It's got a whole safe. Gotta go straight in. If that peak goes in there folded up, it won't help them. Gotta go straight in. Where can we get more information about raw milk and benefits? You can check it from uh, the Western Price Foundation. They're advocates of the uh, sale of raw milk. They encourage people to use it because it's, it's healthier, more nutritional for people to drink instead of the processed milk. And another website is uh, realmilk.com. And there's an article on there entitled Real Milk Cures Many Diseases, written by Dr. Crow, C-R-O-W-E. And uh, it tells about how people in the early 1900s, they'd have different ailments, and doctors would put them on a, a raw milk diet, just milk, for maybe six, seven weeks. That's all they had to cure different ailments. It's amazing. Yeah. And that article is probably about four pages long. I used to have some copies of it, but I gave them all away. <laughs> gave them to people when I first started doing it. It's amazing. They, they give people with a diabetic or men with prostate trouble, high blood pressure, all kinds of things. They put them on a milk diet to treat them. Yeah. See, that? See how that horn got smooth from bumping it so much? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've been doing that ever since. Milk in the Little feisty. <laughs> yeah. See these milk veins right here? A dairy cow always has milk veins on the stomach. They always watching. Big eyes. Oh yeah. Better to see you with my ears. See you in the box. Okay, and I take this off and I just throw this out. Pull it out like that and it releases the vacuum. It comes right off. See, these gave more. There, there they gave more milk. Okay. That goes slow. I don't want to waste it. It's flat. Okay, just, just be careful, she might, she might, she's not used I'm to keeping me. my distance. Be still, Katrina, be still. Ah. It's all milk now. Cool. Try this one. It's probably Could sore. Get, it that <laughs> get any? Mm. A little? Yeah, she milked out real good. <laughs> you see how the udder's gone down? Yeah. Milk's out of there now. You have something to wipe your hand off? Yeah. Can I touch you? 
No. Is she made for real good. See how drawn up it is? Mm hmm. Tonight, when I get ready to milk again, it'll be firm again. Because it'll be heavy. It wants to get out. She listens to you. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> This is Heather, and that was Katrina. No, she's not on the milk cart. You already milked her? Yeah. She's back. She's back again? She thinks she's going to get seconds. <laughs> you got to watch her milk. You know, who do you if you don't watch it? Yeah. They think they're going to get some more. Yeah. Wow. How long does it usually take? It takes me about two hours. Two hours? Clean up. we got to wash and rinse and clean out my equipment. Seems like a lot of work. It is. There's more to it than just milking the cows. You know? Thank <laughs> you.